Hi, welcome to Sports Night. I'm Haley Jatakis here with Vanessa Lichard, and we have your Michigan Sports Roundup. This past weekend at the NCAA Swimming and Diving Championship, Michigan swimmer Felix Aubach finished first in the 1650-yard freestyle, earning him the national title. This was Aubach's first individual title, and he finished the race with a personal record of 14 minutes and 22 seconds. This is an impressive feat after fi finishing 35th in his favorite event, the 500 freestyle, the previous day. Aubach's time makes him the third fastest swimmer ever in that event. He's the 109th Wolverine in the program to earn a national swimming title. Michigan had three All-Americans compete last weekend, including Aubach. His win pushed the Wolverines into 13th place for the meet. California finished first in the championship, and fellow Big Ten team Indiana finished third. That's a pretty impressive record. I didn't swim in high school, and I know minimum about swimming, but I can tell you that those numbers definitely play to his favor. He was flying. I used to swim distance in high school and my best time for the 500 was like 545. So yeah. he was flying. Well, good for him. But moving on to our next story, the Michigan women's lacrosse team is off to a, its best start in its six year history, moving to 13 and 0 on the season after a 16 to 11 win over number 18 John Hopkins. Caitlin Meir led the scoring for the Wolverines with six, go six goals, also adding one assist to tie the single season assist record. After falling behind 4-1 to one in the first half, the Wolverines were able to grind it out and get a 6-5 to five lead heading into the locker room. The second half belonged to Michigan, who went on a second 5-0 to run to close out the win. This is Michigan's sixth win over a ranked team this season, and the team has clearly found comfort at the new U of M lacrosse stadium. The Wolverines will travel to Maryland Saturday for an evening game with the Turpins. I do not often watch lacrosse, but I like it because it reminds me of hockey. But when mm -hmm. I heard about the Michigan women's team being so successful, I was so happy for them and yeah. like excited to actually start watching some games and you know working on mm -hmm. them for Big Ten Network. Johns Hopkins is always really good, so to get a win against them is awesome. Yeah, them. good for them, man. Well, speaking of more wins, Michigan baseball had an impressive weekend in their Big Ten opener by sweeping their in-state rival, Michigan State. In East Lansing on Friday, the Wolverines defeated the Spartans 6-2. to two. Pitcher Tommy Henry only allowed three hits over the eight innings he played. Michigan's offense remained active on Saturday when they dominated at home, winning 16-2. Senior Jimmy Kerr had two home runs and a five RBI on Saturday to lead the Wolverines, while junior right fielder Jordan Brewer and sophomore catcher Joe Donovan each had their own home runs early in the game to account for Michigan's four home runs that day. Sunday's game against Michigan State was postponed due to weather, but the team returns to action April 3 to take on Toledo at home. Yeah, we were both actually at the baseball game on Saturday, and it was a great game because Michigan defeated Michigan State immensely, but the weather, man, Oof. that was disgusting. It was rainy, it was cold, it was snowy, it was windy, even though a couple days it was 67 before, so That's I don't Michigan know. Michigan weather for you. That I is Michigan you. weather for you. <laughs> but moving on to another successful victory this weekend, Michigan softball is ranked 23rd in the nation as they burst Rutgers this past weekend for a doubleheader. The team jumped out to early leads in both games, and they never looked back. The Wolverines swept the series 7-0 and 7-4 by totaling 13 hits in each game. Sophomore pitcher Megan Bobian recorded a win and a save, while senior first baseman Alex Boyack hit a home run in each game. She would earn the Big Ten Player of the Week honors. Michigan is now 23-10 on the season and 6-0 in the Big Ten play. They are tied for the first in the conference with Northwestern and Minnesota, and they have an 11-game winning streak. Next up is a home game tomorrow against Toledo. I don't know if you have any comments about how successful Michigan softball has been doing. I know we've both been at a couple games. But yeah, I mean, every year they're always a contender. They're yeah. always so good. And with Coach Hutch, you never know. I know. It's really exciting just to see these spring teams all for Michigan flourishing. Mm -hmm. The baseball team, the softball team, the women's lacrosse team. It's great. But moving on to an actual recap in our last seg segment for this roundup is basketball recapping. Both the Michigan men's and women's basketball teams found their season come to an end last week in the March Madness bracket. The women's team ended the season with a 22-12 record, the third most wins in the school's history. They received an eight seed in the NCAA tournament where they took on Kansas State in the first round. Thanks to the 38 points from the bench and senior Nicole Munger scoring her 1,000th point, 
the team advanced past the Wildcats, 84 to 54. Unfortunately, the team could not pass advance number one seeded Louisville, losing 71 to 50. Men's basketball made it a little further, winning two rounds against Montana and Florida and going to the Sweet 16 in Anaheim. They were then dominated by Texas Tech's top-ranked defense and lost by 19 points. This wasn't how the Wolverines wanted to end their season, but Beeline promised that this game wouldn't define the team who started off the season 17-0. March Madness is wild, and watching as Michigan fans, I know I'm excited, I bet you're excited. So seeing both of the teams lose was disappointing, but just knowing that next year is going to be such a successful year for both the men's and mm -hmm. women's team made me excited. But I was sad to see, you know, Michigan men's basketball team losing the Sweet 16 instead of going to the Final Four like they did last year. Yeah, that was hard to watch. But, I mean, a lot of the teams coming back next year, and they're just going to come back better than ever. That's what yep. I think. But I think that wraps up our Michigan sports. So thank you so much for tuning in, and have a good sports night.